Some of you people are familiar with, the, uh, with what happened with uh, Elon, Elon Musk when he, he kind of like uh, wanted to find out, you know, throwing balls at the uh, glass. But uh, this stuff doesn't react like that. Watch this. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So if you haven't heard of Sandy Munro, let me just sum it up in a nutshell. He knows more about manufacturing in the automotive industry than anyone else that I know of on planet Earth. Munro and Associates have created a YouTube channel called Munro Live. I'll put a link in the description. Over the past couple of months, they've been creating a series of videos tearing down the Model Y and the content is absolutely fantastic and incredibly insightful. So I really do recommend watching those videos, guys. And with the teardown process now finished, Sandy has shared a few of his clothes closing thoughts about what he really thought stood out about the Model Y. So in this video, I'm going to share a couple of those clips and also add a few comments where I think it's relevant. Without further ado, let's dive in. Hey guys, we will have a great offer. If you'd like to get a free stock valued up to $1,400 and help out the channel, there's a link in the description. All right, let's get back to it. Continual improvement is what we see with most uh, manufacturers. They stop and uh, in, make improvements uh, in one big batch. Then they limp along or do whatever they do and collect other improvements and when they feel the time is appropriate, they implement uh, in batches. This car and the Model 3 show us that that's not the, that's not the strategy that Tesla has. They have true continuous improvements. So what they do is they spot something that's wrong, they fix it immediately, they stick it in as a running change and continue going. It's continuous. Some of the stuff is major, some of it's minor, but at the end of the day, these guys, these guys here are doing something that's a step change beyond everyone else. And this car should be a wake up call for anyone who's manufacturing anything, regardless of whether it's a cell phone or a car or an airplane or anything else in the marketplace. I just want to jump in here really quickly and just point out that this is a huge, huge, huge statement from Sandy. For somebody with so much expertise in manufacturing across so many different industries, for him to be making such a strong statement, he's basically saying, listen, anybody who makes anything, look at Tesla because they're doing it better and smarter than you are. This is hugely important. The continuous improvement that Dr. Deming talked about and focused on, which was on the factory floor, to make improvements every day in every way. This has been now applied to the product design uh, venue and we better take note because this is the new way of doing business. At any point in time, if you buy a Tesla product, you're getting the best possible version of that product that they can produce at that point in time. They're constantly iterating and improving not only their products, but the processes behind their manufacturing. It's just such an engineering mindset, a sort of first principles way of viewing things. It's like the physical products and the processes that Tesla have are becoming software themselves. It's like they're getting patches and updates and new features added to them constantly. It's a whole different way of producing products. Imagine trying to compete with that. You don't get the opportunity to put a new feature out to market and then find out how it works and learn iteratively along the way. Tesla is constantly putting things out and changing their processes and then learning from that change which can then allow them to get even better and better and better. It's a compounding exponential feedback loop. It's out of control and this is why Sandy's pointing out that it's so important for everyone else to take note. So let's look at some of the things that Sandy had to say about the Model Y. The mega casting um, represents a significant jump in innovation when it comes to body structure. We've seen many other OEMs use smaller cast nodes throughout their vehicles, specifically in the rear quarter and front shock towers, but nothing of this scale. This spans the full width of the body. Tesla's talked about combining the two existing castings into one and potentially even incorporating more, more than one into the uh, forward body structure, and that single casting will be uh, definitely a game changer. There are definite advantages uh, to be had in pursuing this, but it's definitely in charter territory when it comes to the tooling, complexity costs, and the physics associated with executing this. Just imagine being another OEM and you hear comments like this from Sandy Munro effectively saying that Tesla's pushing the boundaries of physics and tooling and in totally uncharted territory in the automotive manufacturing industry. They're a new player, right? They're not that old. They haven't been around that long and already they're innovating and pioneering things that nobody else has done. Project that into the future. There's no reason to expect this rate of innovation and change and finding new engineering efficiencies and better way to do things and constantly optimizing won't continue into the future. What can you infer from that about Tesla's future products? 
The one thing that I will tell you is that they probably are going to be successful. And the reason is, is because they are creating their own aluminum. They're creating new material science that no one else is. And so that's consequently why they can make these things happen. It's just chalk and cheese. Tesla is a completely different entity. They're thinking, how can we solve problems? First principles. They're really, really, really smart engineers are figuring out how can we make things cheaper, more efficiently, quicker, etc. How can we save weight, cost? They continue thinking. It's not like, oh, well, shit, I don't know what we could do. I mean, it'd be cool if we could make a gigantic, big stamped piece, but um, no one's done that before. So, nope. Whereas Tesla is like, no one's done this before, but the physics says it's possible. We'll just build the world's largest die casting machine, invent a new material, no problem, which is exactly what they've done. Again, just infer what does this mean for the future? Tesla is operating on a whole other level. They're playing a different game to everyone else. And we're seeing the outcome of this now. The difference between the Model 3 and the Model Y, which Sandy, again, go watch all the videos on the channel, you get a much better understanding. But the difference is just between these two vehicles over a few years, the improvements, the efficiencies, the optimization is just outstanding. One of the things that I'm very, very excited about is the, uh, the heat pump. The addition of the heat pump to me was, um, was um, a very efficient use of power cons consideration when you're in the world of EVs. Um, the less power you use uh, for accessories means more range. Although um, many might not realize that the, the HVAC system draws a significant amount of power. And in pursuing a heat pump system, Tesla sought to eliminate high voltage movement that previously had when, the, when they had the uh, PTC heater in the cabin. While Tesla is not the first OEM to use a heat pump, um, actually the EV, the, the, the LEAF uh, used it, they definitely took, uh, took the idea to new heights in their version of the system. We were impressed with a super bottle system we saw in the Model 3, which was, uh, that played an integral role in the thermal management of the three, but the latest iteration with the octo valve and the heat pump definitely represents a step forward in terms of innovation and integration. This is the way everybody should probably be looking at um, uh, heating and cooling inside their vehicles. The Model Y heat pump and octo valve is an astonishing innovation of engineering and the reason is it's enabled the range to increase by about 10%. It means the Model Y has almost an identical range to the much smaller, much lighter Model 3. It's insane, especially if you understand physics. This video is really about inference, right? What can we infer from the fact that between one generation of mass-produced vehicle to the next, Tesla has found a way to reinvent thermal management and get an extra 10% range. This is just one engineering improvement to one aspect of the vehicle, right? Keeping it cool and warm think about everything else just okay cool if they could do this oh there's that aluminium casting part as well which has saved a huge amount of processes this whole thing is going on at every level of the business optimizing the actual structure of the organization the manufacturing processes the materials the vehicles like everything they can possibly optimize they're doing this is uh, the ADAS board and uh, this is from the model 3 now I, I don't have the one from the model Y because I've got two electrical engineers looking at this thing, trying to um, figure it out. This is what I would classify as my major takeaway. This board here is for um, auto, autopilot. Um, this would be rated at about two and a half. The other one is rated as a three. And if you think this is densely populated, and if you think these ICs are, are pretty snappy, the, uh, the NVIDIA chips, remember that Tesla has decided to invent their own chip. And that has given our guys fits trying to figure out how this thing works and how they're gonna take it apart and how we decap and how we x-ray and on and on and on. So it's gonna take us a while before we can show you the ADAS board from the Model Y. But the Model 3 was dramatic and still is. But when we get to the Model Y or when we took the Model Y to pieces, um, we were totally blown away. We're going to probably have to wait for a while before my guys can get that done. But this, this is my major takeaway. Everything electronic for Tesla is, is absolutely stunning. 
I think it's fair to say that those of you who know Sandy well enough will know that he's a fairly understated guy. So for him to use the term absolutely stunning, we really should take a step back and let that sink in. The reason that I've shared these three insights from Munro today is just to give you guys a little bit of a piece of the puzzle of how I reason about what Tesla is capable of doing in the future. Let's recap of what we looked at today. So what Tesla has effectively done, they have cast a giant single piece of aluminium with a new material that they've developed for this particular process because no one's ever die cast something so big before to save them producing about 70 components turned it into two currently eventually the goal is one they've deleted like 70 components and all of the processes of actually putting them together they've saved time money weight all sorts of stuff and they have a stronger vehicle as well no one else has ever thought to do this and yet here's tesla on the second iteration of a mass market vehicle sharing a lot of its parts in common with the model 3 the Model Y now has this huge innovation. This is just one aspect of the physical materials and how they actually put together the vehicle. Just at the hardware level, at the physical components, the materials and the processes for actually producing the vehicles, Tesla is innovating at a staggering rate. And then we look at the heat pump and the octo valve, which is an engineering innovation. Tesla has just taken it to a whole other level. And Munro is now saying, guys, like literally everybody, you should just copy this. It's an amazing design. This really, 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 really speaks volumes about the quality of the engineers at Tesla. The fact that they are able to invent things that the entire industry should adopt because they're that much further ahead of what everyone else is currently doing really speaks volumes about the potential and the capacity of the engineers at Tesla to continue to find new and better solutions for doing things in new and better ways. Just imagine that your engineers are that smart and that good at what they do and that motivated that they can find a 10% range improvement by reinventing, reimagining how thermal management can work in an electric vehicle. It's tough to compete with that. And then of course, you've got the additional layer of the computer technology. Now they have the Model Y chip and the engineers are literally brain breaking like what even am I looking at? How do I even start with this thing? What in the f***? Okay, what is this? Okay, this is actually something from another dimension. This is what's occurring right now, I believe. Maybe I'm hallucinating at Munro and Associates because the technology is that ridiculously far ahead of anything that they've seen that they're just like... Okay, Munro was pretty specific there talking about absolutely stunning. If we put these pieces of the puzzle together, Tesla is developing innovative ways to actually put together their vehicles cheaper, faster, in a smaller footprint, in a factory, etc. Like everything they can possibly optimize about this, they're doing. They also heavily optimize the actual structure of the corporation. I've covered this in previous videos, but there's no sort of, you know, hierarchy, right? In Tesla, if you need to talk to somebody to solve a problem, you just talk to that person. It doesn't matter who they are, even if it's the freaking CEO. And of course, yes, caveat, the janitor's probably not going to be saying, hey, what's up, Elon? We really need to talk. But you get the point, right? People need to be able to find ways to solve problems. And that's how it works at Tesla instead of, oh no, you've got to go through your manager or your manager, no, 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 no. Whatever works, whatever makes the most sense, we'll do that. So they're optimizing in this area as well. And then of course, you've got optimizations with the actual hardware and components of the vehicle, stuff like the thermal management thing with the heat pump and the octo valve. Tesla, out of nowhere, engineers are able to innovate and figure out ways to make the battery get 10% more range because less energy is being used to thermally manage inside the cabin and also the motor. And then of course, you have the full self-driving computer chip that Tesla has developed internally themselves because the one that was available from nvidia wasn't good enough for what they wanted to do now this isn't a diss on nvidia they need to cater to a much wider number of clients it's not so nation specific for what tesla needed hence they vertically integrated and designed their own chip the point is the technology the chip that tesla has developed now internally is so far ahead of everybody else and it's the most important piece of the puzzle it is the single most important part of an electric vehicle in the future yes the battery matters for range all that kind of stuff what matters most is solving fully autonomous driving and then the computer behind that needs to be powerful enough to do it you need great software you need data to feed to that software to get it better tesla's winning at all of this stuff and then that computer becomes a platform for infotainment and again you need software expertise so all of the things that matter from the manufacturing stuff which oh no tesla's new they'll never be able to figure out how to build cars like old no 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 that was wrong then Tesla's figuring out inventive new ways that people in the industry haven't developed for decades that could have been used to the point where someone like Sandy Munro, an expert, is saying, hey guys, like everybody should be doing this now. Picture this, five, 10 years time, your car drives you around. What are you doing while you're inside a vehicle? You're gonna be connected. You're gonna be having meetings, doing work, sleeping, having sex, doing whatever you want because you're no longer needing to pay attention to what's on the road. It's gonna change everything. Tesla is winning everywhere it matters. They're optimizing their business, the structure of the company, the manufacturing processes, the gigafactories are getting better, the materials, they're inventing new things to get stuff done. Look at their patterns, it's out of control. So please guys, let me know what you thought in the comments below. I just wanted to give you some insights into three of the key things that I took away from Sandy's top 10 takeaways from the Model Y teardown. Tesla, 
user is absolutely slaying it. This is the time to take notice. The Cybertruck is the next iteration of this insane improvement. They've got rid of paint shop. There's hardly any components. Like this is just gonna be a whole other mind blowing level of efficiency. Can't wait to see more of Tesla's innovations and constant optimization into the future. Guys, don't forget your free stock with Webull. Link in description. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. This channel has kind of blown up since it launched, and I'm working on making the best possible content for you guys, but it takes time. Consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can continue creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. And you can now also become a member of the channel to get some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again. Anyway, this is why I work here. I love this job. Uh, I do it for free.